behind. It had metal circling the front grille. The KR identification was dropped, and they were now manufactured on the same production line as the regular Mustangs. Carroll Shelby announced the end of his involvement with Ford. In 1970, Mustangs won the SCCA Trans Am Championship. The 70 Mach 1 cost $3,271 and weighed 3,240 pounds. This stunning 1970 Mach 1 with the My 70 Ford license plate has a 351 CID Cleveland V4 engine, FMX automatic transmission, 9-inch rear end with 3.25 to 1 ratio, power disc brakes, power steering, factory air, deluxe interior with tachometer. Everything is factory stock except the special yellow paint, flow fit seats, and seat belts. The introduction of the Boss and Mach affected Shelby sales. In 1968, 4,450 Shelby Mustangs were sold, but only 601 in 1970. This Calypso Coral Boss 302 four-barrel, eight-cylinder engine Mustang came with competition suspension, quick ratio steering, Magnum 500 chrome wheels, tachometer, four-speed transmission, power front disc brakes, and a radio. Rear slats and spoilers were now available options on all Mustangs. Another Boss 302. Boss Mustangs came in striking colors. These three are Grabber Orange, Grabber Blue, and grabber green. This is a Boss 429 built to comply with NASCAR race rules, which required 500 cars be manufactured and offered to the public. Only 1,300 were built, and they carried the NASCAR tag on the lower edge of the driver's door. It was a highly modified version of Ford's Thunderbird and full-sized car engine. It had a huge functional hood scoop. This 1970 is one of 10 California cars built. The battery is in the trunk. There just wasn't room in the engine compartment. It also helped weight distribution for racing. The 1971 Mustangs anticipated the public's desire for more luxury and bigger, longer cars. The grille cavity was as wide as the car, and the fastback, or should we say sports roof, extended all the way to the rear, earning the description flatback. These are Boss 351s, which were only made this one year. 1,806 were produced. The 1971 Mach 1 with the 429 Cobra Jet Ram Air engine. It has the automatic C6 transmission. It's been entered in four shows so far and taken first prize in all of them. Looking uncannily like a Mach 1, a red 1971 429 Cobra Jet Mustang convertible. Only about 1,300 cars were built with the 429 engine, and only about 100 of those were convertibles, so this is a rare car. Fully restored back to original condition, it was trimmed out like a Mach 1 and could have been called a Mach 1 convertible, but Ford didn't. Red with matte black stripes. Power windows, air conditioning, Magnum 500 wheels with the same tires that were offered that year. Muscle cars were losing popularity due to insurance costs and emission standards. Sales dropped to 125,093 in 1972. However, sales for Pinto were over 347,000. By 1973, the oil crisis had car manufacturers worried. 73 was also the last year for the convertible for 10 years. The 1974 Mustang II was smaller, with a four-cylinder engine as standard and a six as an option. The Mustang II changed little between 1974 and 1978. In 1975, the 302 V8 was offered as an option and developed 122 horsepower. 
By 1976, Ford was planning a new Mustang. Ford had bought the Cobra name and in 1976 offered the Cobra II. The engine was 302 single barrel V8 rated at 139 horsepower. At first only available in white with twin black hood stripes and a rocker panel stripe carrying the Cobra II insignia. Different color combinations were offered in 1977. The 77 Ghia showed off luxurious interior and moonroof. The 1978 Mustang commercial stressed price less than 77. To celebrate its 15th anniversary, the horse reappeared in Mustang commercials in 1979. Aerodynamics became important. Since low drag factor enhanced fuel economy, wind tunnel testing, a total of 136 hours in all, was extensive. The engine choices remained the same as for the Mustang II. The four-cylinder engine was standard, but now a turbocharged version was offered. Four-speed manual, four-speed manual with overdrive, V6 and V8 only, and three-speed automatic were available. 332,025 units were produced, it was selected to be the 1979 Indianapolis 500 pace car. So here the Mustang takes the oval at the Indianapolis Speedway. 1979 was also the year Lee Iacocca was fired. Little changed in 1980. Here Mustang takes on Porsche to prove it can match it in acceleration, cornering, braking, etc. And all at an affordable price. In 1981 power windows and T-bar roof style were options. In 1982, under the grueling desert sun, Mustang takes on the Camaro and beats it in 7.3 seconds. Ford continued to remind its public that Mustang originated from race car design and engineering. And in fact, the very first Mustang prototype was a two-seater race car. This 1962 documentary, The Mustang, shows us the evolution of that first Mustang prototype from idea to illustration to finished model. This prototype was originally named Mustang after the World War II fighter plane. However, the horse, a less warlike symbol, would become its namesake. After many preliminary drawings, they come up with the final design. Clean entry, stylized roll bar, and functional air scoops on the sides. The emblem is first created on paper, then in clay and wood, and finally in metal. The special body was first developed in clay, starting with a wooden frame called an armature, over which hot modeling clay is pushed and formed. When cool, the clay is perfect for sculpting. From this, a fiberglass model is created. It's then subjected to wind tunnel tests, which confirmed the car's aerodynamic body and proved the effectiveness of the side vents. The aluminum sections are checked carefully against the fiberglass mold for accuracy before being welded and joined to the frame. After final additions are made, the car is tested on a track and is clocked at the Daytona Speedway at 120 miles per hour at a comfortable 6,100 RPM. Sterling Moss, the famous race car driver, introduces it before the start of the American Grand Prix at Watkins Glen. Car and Driver was the first of many magazines to recognize Mustang's engineering and styling innovations. At the University of Miami, students are enthralled by the Mustang prototype, showing the dual exhaust system, turn signals, and stoplight. The Mustang emblem is the rear deck latch, the engine has a single carburetor, high-speed cams, 11 to 1 compression ratio, 60 degree V4 block on 92 cubic inches. The lights swivel for night driving. The license plate can be down for regular driving or up for racing. 
Although Ford believed there wasn't enough market appeal for the Mustang prototype, this dream car would evolve into one of the most successful.